Today I'm going to test this Allpowers R600 power station and 100W solar panel for it. And I've prepared a list of tests that I want to do. Here is my list of tests that I want to do. I've prepared expected values and I will measure the real values and also a few additional things that I want to test. And let's start from those faster tests and easier ones. So let's see the flashlight, how it works. First we have to enable the device. Single press. Second press we have a brighter light. And on the third press we have a SOS signal. And fourth press it disables the flashlight. So really simple, can be useful in some situations. And it's working in those light mode, bright mode and SOS mode. So all that you need from a flashlight like this. So the flashlight is working as expected, no problems with that. Now let's see the solar panel, how it is working. Today is some winter sun. So let's test this solar panel if it is working. And let's see if it is working. 52 watts input right now. There are some clouds, of course unlucky. And because this is winter, so it's not easy to find sun. But even with those clothes we have 45 watts so I will wait a while maybe they will come back sun but we can see that at cloudy weather we have half of the 100 watts so they are probably 100 watts of power let's wait a while Probably no more sun for today. Maybe I will find another sunny day to test full potential, but uh, it is working at least at its half power at the cloudy weather. It should work on the sunny weather even better. So it is working, but the weather is not optimal for testing it. Solar panels are working. You can use them to charge this device really easily anywhere where you have a sun. Uh, let's see the app. In the manual, we have QR codes for the app on iOS and Android. So let's download it. All powers. Let's add it using Bluetooth. Right here, we have information to press it for three seconds to toggle the Bluetooth. We have a Bluetooth signal right here. And it found this device. Let's connect to it. And we have information about it. 100% of the battery, remaining time. We have input power, output power. We can control the outputs. We can toggle on off AC and DC outputs and also a flashlight. Let's see if it works. DC turn on, DC turn off, flashlight, AC. It is working without any problems. And is there something more? We can mute this device, standard mode and fast mode, and also echo mode and time to shut it down in echo mode. So the fast mode and standard mode is about charging. If you want fast charging or standard charging. And we have the saving mode that if we use less than 10 watts for a few hours that we selected, it will turn off this output. So useful in some situations and we can also change the name and that's all in this app you don't need anything more i think 
you can see all the informations and control the device really easily using the phone. So I didn't get any problems with the app. It was working as expected. So I give it a tick. And now let's see those more important tests. And let's start with the USB protocols. We should be able to receive 100 watts from it. I have a device for testing the USB protocols. And I will test also the USB-A because on the USB-A we have lower power, but let's see what it is able of. But on the USB-C we should have 100 watts. So let's see if we do. I am powering the device through power bank. And let's see what it can give us. We can see right here, power delivery 3.0, 100 watts. We can get from it 100 watts. And also there are available many known protocols from different brands. It is a good quality USB-C output with 100 watts. They didn't like about it. And let's see the USB-A output, what it can offer us. And what do we have right here? It has a quick charge 3.0, so we can charge our phones faster. But of course it isn't 100 watts like a USB-C. It doesn't have power delivery, but this is normal. This is a USB-A, but we can see it has some protocols for fast charging also. So it is good for charging phones and other USB devices. So they said it should have 100 watts output and in reality it has 100 watts. So they didn't light about it. And let's see the sign. They say it should be a clear sign. So let's test it. And for testing the sign, I'm going to use this oscilloscope. Let's turn on the AC output. And right here we have this sign. We can see it is clear. There is no dump in this. I will show you for comparison how does it look a sign that is not clear. I have other lower quality item right here. And this is a not clear sign right here. You can see clear difference between this chip device and this all power device. For sure it has a clear sign. Yes, it is without any dump. And let's see the UPS function. They say it should switch in 10 milliseconds from the grid to its own battery when it lost the power. So let's test it. This is the test that I've prepared. I have oscilloscope. I have a light to see a flash if it dims for those 10 milliseconds. I have this energy meter as an electric device that we will see if it shuts down for those 10 milliseconds without power. It should stay on without turning off. And I have a socket to turn on and off this device. Let's turn on the grid. We have a UPS symbol right here. There is a, it is working as a UPS right now. The light is working. The device is turning on. It is working right now, this device. And also I will connect this socket tester to the second socket. We have now two lights on the right, which means everything is okay. This is a good socket. And let's see, the socket is also outputting, it is good. On the oscilloscope I've saved the moment when they turn off and we have this a little bit of flat space. I have set the diff for 50 milliseconds and it is about one fifth of the diff in the length where there are zero. 
So it is around 10 milliseconds, as they say. The light blink for a short time. I will see if you can see that on the camera. The device didn't turn off. It is still working. But let's see one more thing. What happens if I disconnect this cable fully from the grid? Now we have a only middle light because it means it doesn't have a grounding pin. And it is true because now this device is off grid. So it doesn't have a ground. Of course, our devices are working right now, but when it is working off grid, of course, it doesn't have a grounding pin. But even if I connect this to the ground, we've disabled, so it doesn't have uh, power from the grid, but it has connected ground. We can see now it shows that everything is okay because uh, it has ground, but doesn't have power from this socket. So is the UPS working? Everything works as expected. Nothing has turned off. It was around those 10 milliseconds that they said. So without any dump, I agree that it is working as it should. And now we have a more time consuming test for charging and discharging. What is the real capacity of this device? So let's test it. The device is fully charged from the AC input and from discharging I am using this small heater and also I am going to measure the time how long it takes to discharge and I am going to record the time lapse of it. But first let's disconnect the charging. Everything is prepared for the test. I will show you one more time. It is zeroed right here. We have all the zeros, 100% of the battery. The cord is disconnected. So it is working on its own battery. And let's start the test. And we have the end. The AC output turned off automatically at 5% battery left. And let's see the result. I hope it will turn off without the load. No. Nope. So let's, we will see the results from this socket. 250 watt hours we received from this device. And we have a 5% battery left that we cannot use for the AC because the AC turns off. But DC probably should, yes, we can use DC still for the rest of the 5%. So let's write the result. 250 watt hours. And we expected 254 watt, but we still have those 5% left. And I was using 400 watts for discharging. And maybe at the lower power, we would receive those few watts more. So I think this test is passed because it was really close, only 4 watt hours. And we have those 5% left that we cannot use for AC, but we can still use for DC. So now let's test charging, how much it will charge and at what power. I will test this normal mode and fast mode. So let's test it. Let's reset the counter. We have zero watt hours right now. The device has still 5% left. Let's reset the timer. Let's start on the standard mode. It is charging at 160 watts at 5% of the battery. Let's see the fast mode if it changes. I don't see the difference. Maybe at higher SOC we will see difference. Let's turn on the timer and let's leave it on a fast mode right now. It is fully charged right now. It shows zero watts, but it is still using like 10 watts. So it is interesting, but the time is twice as long as it should be, almost two hours. I'm not sure what went wrong. Maybe the fast charging mode is not so fast. I will try the normal mode for comparison, if it will be faster or slower than the fast charging mode, but it has 100% right now. And how much power did it use? 349 watt hours. So more than this capacity, but this is expected because of the AC to DC conversion, but the time was longer than expected. And I will measure it second time, but I will charge it in normal mode and see what's the difference. And now let's do the test of DC discharging. <laughs> 
Next test is ready. Let's try to discharge this energy storage using USB-C and let's try to take 100 watts from it. Now we have 20 watts. 40 watts, 60 watts, and what happened? I too fast change it, but now we have 100 watts of the power output from this energy storage, and let's see how much energy we will receive from it. And the DC discharging test is over. Let's see the results. 271 watt hours and here it is totally empty. It doesn't show anything. And even if we run it, this is 272 watt hours. So it is even bigger value than expected. So on the AC we had minimally less than expected and on the DC we have minimally more than expected. And now let's charge it one more time. Now with the normal mode, not in the fast mode. Let's give it power. We have 0%, 100 watts input and let's change the charging mode and standard mode. Let's see how it will charge on the standard mode. And it is fully charged right now. This time it was faster. Still, it wasn't one hour. It was around one and a half of hour. And the timer isn't perfect this time because I had some problems, but around one and a half hour in normal mode, which is closer to one hour, but still not one hour. And from zero, when I was charging this, this time 366 watt hours. So these are the results from 5% and from 0%, a little bit more came in. And the time was not one hour, but in normal mode, one and a half hour, in fast mode, two hours. All in all, it is quite fast. And now let's test the wireless charger. It is charging 14 watts output. The phone is charging, so the wireless charger is working. And the last test, maximum AC output power. It should have 600 watts constant power and 1200 watts for a few seconds. So let's test it. I've prepared right here 600 watts of load and let's turn it on and see if it works. No problem, 600 watts, it is working. And now let's test 1200 watts. And now I've changed the setup to 1200 watts. And let's see what happens when I turn it on. It was working for a few seconds and then it shut off because of this overpower protection. So as expected, I can place a tick and these are the results of those tests. So for its price, this device is really good. It does what it should do. And I think this is a good device, useful in many situations. And now you know what is it able of. So that's all for today. Remember to use the code DIM10 for 10% of discount and like, subscribe and be nice.